Today's objectives are to recognize and apply properties of rectangles, rhombi, and squares, and to determine whether parallelograms are rectangles, rhombi, or squares. So, Gabriel, sum up the first condition for a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then line segment AB is parallel to line segment DC, and line segment AB is parallel to line segment So both pairs of opposite sides Parallel are parallel, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's my first condition. What's my second condition, Yesenia? Um, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, which we did both of these today with our warm-up. What's the third condition? Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Oh, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Okay. Any other ones, Gabriel? Um, the diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals bisect each other. Any others? What's the last one you see? One pair of opposite sides is congruent in the pair. Sides is congruent in parallel. Perfect. So, with that being said, though, it, remember that this one pair has to be both congruent and parallel. It can't be one opposite side being parallel and then the other set of opposite sides being congruent. It has to be that one specific pair. Then we know all of the properties for a parallelogram. So go ahead and check off the properties of a parallelogram. You may use your foldable. Okay. And then we'll talk about our properties of parallelogram. And then we'll introduce our next three quadrilaterals, your rectangle, rhombus, and square. We're going to do today is we're going to explore rectangles, rhombi, and squares. Okay? So what I want you to do is I'm going to put up your partner. And CJ, you said you're confident in doing it by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. We are studying three different quadrilaterals today. So each of you are going to, each group's going to investigate a different quadrilateral. Okay? So the very first page is dealing with our rectangles. So Josh and Gabriel, you'll be doing the first page. And the next page that looks almost identical is going to be our rhombi, which is for CJ. And then the last one is our squares, which is for Yesenia and Rudy. So our instructions. Here, we already did the first one. We glued in our properties of quadrilateral sheet in our notebook. So what you're going to do is you're going to complete the activity and investigate what properties exist for each of your quadrilaterals. You'll have approximately 25 minutes. I'll put a timer up on the board for you to gauge your time. Then you're going to complete your chart from step one for your assigned quadrilateral. So you'll only do it for either a rectangle, rhombus, or square. Then you're going to present your findings to the class, complete our foldable, and then I have a practice worksheet for us to do. Any questions? What I did was I said that the slopes of that and that are opposite reciprocal, so that means they're perpendicular, and perpendicular mm -hmm. lines create a 90 degree angle. Yeah. So we're going to have to use all of them. Do I get one? Nice. Hi, how do you do it? So we already proved that. Do you find the distance between the only? Oh, wait. So the wait, we can so that in our agony, you find the distance between the two. Because then you find the distance between the two. Because you're finding the distance between P and R and distance between F and Q. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Each of these is 90 degrees. If I were you, I would draw what you know on your picture to help you, Mama, to help you grasp how you're trying to work through it. And then each part is a diagonal. Yeah. 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 Small triangles, right? There's six. No, there's eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I see that. 
So that means that this is okay. So it's how can I prove whether or not that this diagonal bisects the angle of Q? How can I prove that this diagonal bisects the angle Q? You have to see if these two angles are the Right, so what can I prove about those two triangles? How can I prove whether or not they're congruent? So it would be It's not P Q T. Parts are congruent on my diagonal. Since they bisect each other and they're congruent to each other, then don't you know that Q to and P are congruent? Because we can use CP on that. CP, CT, Since they bisect each other, so that's midpoint, and then they're congruent. So then you know that P to and Q to are congruent, right? Which, where's so you have to state that. This is the middle and that. Yes. Is that all that's given, right? Um, okay. So well, is there no. anything else? The thing is, I don't know if that you need to use. Triangle, or that all triangles are triangles. Are your diagonals what? Perpendicular or no? The no. Triangle, are they perpendicular? I don't know. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I should do PT and RT. Since all of the triangles are the same mm -hmm. triangle. Oh, no, that's all you need to know. I found a cut. And then you can say that's true. I don't think I need to do that. I don't know how to put that into the size of it. How do you know how to know if there's two triangles? No, they're not in your library. They're all in the interior, but they're not. Hey, Josh, how do you know if those two triangles are like white and like a P, Q, T, and S, T? It could be where this is. Oh. Also, K. All right. There's no further step. Can I say that? There's Why no is there no further step? I mean, because there's nothing that it's you not can do any farther. Why? Like, like, I mean, you know, because they're not we eager it because they don't bisect the angles. Well, how do you know that they don't bisect the angles? Because there's no further step that you can go. This yeah, all has, you can't do another step. Each one. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> Okay, you can show me why. I can't, I don't know how to do that. You can't tell me right now why there's no further step? How do you know that there's no further step? Because, um, because I tried all of them and work. You tried all of what? Like farther steps to prove the angles can grow through either like SSS, SSA, I don't know what's SAS, AAS, and ASA, mm -hmm. there's, you can't prove any size do or that. angles. Converts. You can't do it? Now you're farther. Okay, well then you just figure it out. So what would that be by? Okay. So be able to tell us mm -hmm. why. No. So okay. so right now, so that, right now, what's going on? I remember. <laughs> that two sides oh, are converted. Definition of that stuff. So, and then make sure you fill it out your chart. Oh, so so we can use ASS. We cannot use those. We cannot use those. That's so long. Every time. I know. Like we have a note. I saw. Let's follow our chart. All right, so you need to go back in your packet 
and you're going to complete your table based on what they are telling you, okay? They're going to show you why or why not that is a characteristic of their quadrilateral. You ready? Yeah. So keep your table out, and we're going to go through this group by group. All right, Josh and Gabriel, come on up. Okay, guys, so we have rectangles, and now we're going to share with y'all why we are correct. Okay, so... Okay. Cross out the words then. So, for the first column, which is number one on our chart, op the opposite sides are parallel because we did the, we figured out the slopes of the opposite side. Yes, on the slopes. Yeah, we found the slopes of the opposite sides and they had the same slopes, so they're parallel. Okay. Yeah. C. Um, we know that opposite sides are congruent because we found we, we did the distance formula and of the opposite sides and they're congruent, so that's correct. Um, D. Um, so since the slopes of the opposite sides are, are also reciprocals, meaning they're perpendicular, perpendicular, uh, perpendicular lines are 90 degrees, which so they're congruent. Um, they're they're consecutive. The consecutive angles are uh, supplementary because since they're 90, all of them have to be 90. Um, 90 plus 90 is equal to 80. I went 180. What do we notice about the properties between our parallelogram and our rectangle so far? They're the same. They're the same. Why would they be the same? Because a rectangle is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram, so it should have the same characteristics, right? The same properties. All right. Okay. For F, um, all of the angles are congruent because all of the intersecting lines of uh, throughout, there's four of them, they um, are all opposite reciprocals, so that means all of them are perpendicular lines, and then all of them create 90 degree angles. And so the uh, angles are congruent for that. Uh, for G, all the sides are not congruent because um, we took from here, you, we figured out the distance of the sides, and you can just say two of them, PQ and PS, uh, PQ is square root of 52, PS is square root of 13, so you can see that they are uh, not all congruent because of that. Um, the diagonals do bisect each other because we found the midpoint of the uh, of the two diagonals and they have the same midpoint so that means that they bisect each other um, for I uh, the diagonals are congruent because we found the distance of the diagonals by finding the distance of the two um, what is it, opposite points I guess you were home and they were the same at square root 65 uh, for J the diagonals were not perpendicular. Um, we found the uh, slope of the two diagonals and they um, were not opposite reciprocals, so they were not perpendicular. And then finally, uh, the, the diagonals do not bisect the uh, angles because we start off doing our two count proof right here and uh, there is no step three. Um, if you try to prove the angles congruent by SSS, SAS, AAS, or ASA, there is no further step that you can go on uh, three to uh, prove two sides congruent or two angles congruent. So the um, by the diagonals, not the angles. All right, CJ, you did wrong this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did wrong this. So opposite sides are obviously going to be parallel. One because it's a parallelogram, and two because I've actually calculated the slopes for all the opposite sides, and they are the same. Opposite sides, opposite sides are also congruent because I've calculated all the distances for all the sides, and they're of course congruent. And uh, opposite angles are as well congruent because protractors are fun. <laughs> How do you use your protractor? What do you have to do? Uh, I just, uh, what I did was I lined up the line and um, it's just measured out of where it Why did you have to use a protractor and nobody else had did? Oh, uh, so they did a re rectangle and then what was that? Square? Uh huh. Rhombus. No, he did the rhombus. I'm doing rhombus. Oh, no. Yeah, um, 
Uh, because they are their angles are 90 degrees. And what were your angle measures? My angle measures were uh, 120 and 60. There you go. Okay. So I had strange angle measures. So yeah. Uh, Consecu consecutive angles are supplementary, as uh, 120 plus 60 is 180. Um, all angles are congruent. Not all angles are congruent because, of course, 120 does not equal 60 in general. Uh, all sides actually are congruent. It's like the square root of 85, I think, or something crazy. Something like that. Um, uh, the diagonals do bisect each other because I found both of their midpoints in us at the same location. Uh, diagonals uh, KM and uh, JL, which were my diagonals, are actually congruent uh, because, well, no, they weren't. <laughs> um, and, but they were perpendicular, which I don't think they're perpendicular for rectangles or right. for squares. And then uh, the, uh, di uh, the diagonals do bisect the angles, and I'm going to have to start drawing. That's fine. Because this is, this is a bit big. So. Okay, so uh, as I've already said, all the sides are congruent, which uh, is very important. And uh, since they all bisect each other, I can use side, side, side to prove all of the triangles to be congruent, which I'm very happy about. And um, because of that, that means that all of these little angles right here, at the edges, will be congruent. And since they both, with uh, angle addition postulate, equal the larger angles, that means they uh, are cut in half directly by the diagonals. Wait, but how do you know that all the sides are congruent in triangles when the diagonals are not congruent? Because I just proved it. I uh, earlier I found out that all the sides were congruent because I measured them. But he's talking about your your diagonals. So put your picture back up. Oh, how do I know all the sides are congruent? about like like um like T to your midpoint oh, or like, J to your midpoint. Yes. Because the diagonals bisect each other, that means they split each other into two parts that are congruent for them. So, uh, so how did you prove that L to your center and R to your, or whatever that is, K to your center are uh, uh, congruent? Uh, like, it's not just like one entire proof that I did that would take multiple proofs, but so this side is equal to this side, and then it, this Wait, side Wait, what side is equal to what side? Use your letters. Uh, Side JP, I guess, okay. is equal to side LP, yes. and MP is also equal to MP, and then all the outer sides, including JM and LJ, are congruent. So by side side side, these two triangles are congruent. And I can then replicate that same process for any two adjacent triangles, meaning that they all have to be congruent to each other. You're not following. Alright, let's draw, CJ, why don't you draw what's congruent on your picture? Okay. So I'm going to pin the line. Okay. So this is congruent. So how do you show that they're congruent? Uh, if they're in pen. <laughs> then if, yeah. Then so how do we actually show that they're congruent? How do you look on the board? There you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, since diagonals bisect each other, that means. These are congruent, and these are congruent. So what method to prove that those triangles are congruent did you just use? SSS. What? SSS. SSS, uh -huh. side, 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 right? But don't you have to prove that K to your midpoint and L to your midpoint are uh, congruent? Wait, what? No, you don't. K to the midpoint and what? L to the midpoint. L to the, no. No. Because we, we have proven that K to my midpoint and N to my midpoint are congruent, right? And then we know that this J to my midpoint and L to my midpoint are congruent. So we have all three sides, the three corresponding sides being congruent. So by side, 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 we know that each of our triangles is congruent. It's like a rotation yeah. uh, for like diagonals. 
Okay. So our corresponding angles then are also congruent. Does that make more sense? Okay. Good job, CJ. Not the special one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, last up. Oh, boy. Decidium Rudy. We know that they have opposite sides. The opposite sides are parallel because um, me and Rudy, we both found the mid, is it the, the slope of each side and. Opposite Yeah. Sorry. What do you mean they're off? Is like the slopes are. No, so no. But to be the same. parallel with. I mean, no. They're not uh -huh. at their own problem. Yeah. You're so this, yeah. So this set of of segments are the same slope and then this set of segments are the same slope so that proves that each opposite sides are parallel. Beautiful. So then for C, um, we found out that opposite sides are congruent because in each opposite segment is the same exactly. The square root of 130. And then for D, um, um, each opposite angles are congruent because all of them are equal to 130. So, so each segment that we found the distance of are, is equal to 130. So that proves that um, all angles. That's the angles. Yeah, you did angles. The, the, uh, in a square, all the angles are 90 degrees. How, how can you prove that? Oh, because um, the lines are um, perpendicular. Is that what you said? Okay, and so how do we know that they're perpendicular? Um, because, because the um, yeah, go to the um, yeah. So we found out. So that's where we yeah. That's where it's yeah. opposite reciprocal. There you go. Um, yeah. What's so opposite reciprocal? The, the slopes of okay. the uh, yeah. So the slopes are opposite reciprocal. Good job. Got it. And then for um, E. Yeah. Um, they are supplementary because 90 equals 90 equals 180. Mm -hmm. It's a square. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, all the angles, yeah. All the angles would be root because it's a square, so all of the angles are already 90 degrees. Okay. Um, the, all the sides are pretty root. It's a equilateral. Okay. So, um, because um, before we already found the distance and all the distances. Yeah. Then okay. for H, um, the diagonals um, do bisect each other because we found the midpoint and the midpoint were the same for both. And then for I. Um, the diagonals are congruent because we found the distance of each diagonal and the distance was the same. Okay. Perfect. Where's the Yeah, there's J. Okay, so. Yeah, so A, uh, we found that the diagonals were perpendicular because we found the slope of both of them um, and they were opposite reciprocals. Okay. So, and then K. Okay. So, as you can see, but um, the diagonals, since the diagonals are all congruent, uh, we concluded that all the triangles were isosceles. So, okay. So each diagonal, um, each part of the diagonal from the midpoint is congruent to all the other ones. Which makes it an isosceles triangle since the outer the the other side of the triangle is congruent to all the other sides, so that makes it an isosceles triangle. And and, and what does isosceles mean? It has how many sides congruent? Uh, two, two triangles congruent. Two triangles. Two, two sides. There you go. And um, all, and that also means that the um, base angles are congruent. And since all of the triangles are congruent by side side side, um, we concluded that all uh, that the diagonals do bisect angles. Beautiful. So each of your angles would now be split into how many degrees? Beautiful. Any questions? 
Okay, now looking at your table, we notice that we should notice that our rectangle, our rhombus, and our square do indeed have all the properties of a parallelogram, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a rectangle has how many extra properties? Two. Two. A rhombus has how many? Three. Three, right? But what do we notice about a square? Oh. It has all of them. Why do you think a square has all of them, Josh? Because it's like almost you could say it's like a perfect figure. It has all um like it has a, a congruent all congruent side lengths, congruent angles, and a parallel opposite sides. Right. But what do we notice? Does the square have the same properties as a rectangle? Yes, because the square is a rectangle. Because a square is a rectangle, right? Does it have the same properties as a rhombus? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. a square is a rhombus. It, has all. it does, right? It has all sides congruent. Diagonals bisect each Wait. other. Oh yeah, that's right. I was thinking. I was thinking no, because a square doesn't have um the this that 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 it has all congruent sides and a rhombus does. I mean angles and a rhombus does. Right. But it has the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus, right? So if it is a square, then it's what? A parallelogram. It's a parallelogram, it's a rectangle, rectangle and it's a rhombus. Do we see this? So a square would be the most specific way of naming your parallelogram, yes? The least specific would be to name it a parallelogram. So if it's a square, it's also what? A parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus. There we go. It's a quadrilateral. If it's a rhomb and a quadrilateral. <laughs> if it's a rhombus, then it's also a rectangle. It's also a parallelogram and a quadrilateral. It's also a parallelogram, right? And if it's a rectangle, it's also a parallelogram. Okay. Those are other ways to name. Yeah. So if I ask you for the most specific, if it contains all the properties of a rectangle and a rhombus, then it's going to be a square. Any questions? All right. Wait. What yes. is the least specific, specific thing to say that's not the graph and that it just quadrilateral? Quadrilateral. Yes. Or even, Shape. even less polygon. specific polygon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any questions about what we did today? No. All right. So 